Imagine looking up at the night sky, and somewhere out there, about 1800 light years away, a planet orbits its star. It's almost like Earth, only older, larger, and more mysterious. Astronomers call it Kepler 452b, and they call it the most Earth-like of all exoplanets discovered so far. This cosmic cousin may have forests and vast oceans teeming with bizarre marine life. What if, thanks to technologies such as a real warp drive, we could travel to Kepler 452b and set foot on this world ourselves? Would we find a second home there? In July 2015, NASA made a discovery that caused a worldwide sensation. With the help of the Kepler Space Telescope, researchers identified a planet that is remarkably similar to our Earth. Kepler 452b is located about 1800 light years away in the constellation Cygnus and orbits a sun-like star. Its orbit lies in the so-called habitable zone, the area where liquid water could exist, a basic prerequisite for life as we know it. The planet is about 60% larger than Earth and is believed to be rocky. Its sun is older and brighter than ours. Science has provided dozens of data, models, and probabilities. All in all, our world and Kepler 452b share a surprising number of characteristics. But what does that really mean? Could life exist there? Or are we even dealing with a second Earth? Beyond the facts and figures, the imagination begins. What would we see, hear, and feel if we could land there? What would an expedition to visit this distant twin look like? And could we ever survive outside Earth? The search for a second Earth. Are we alone? Is there a place out there that resembles our Earth? With water, air, maybe even life? For centuries, people have looked up at the sky and asked themselves this question. Modern astronomy has turned this longing into a scientific mission. With the launch of the Kepler Space Telescope in 2009, a whole new era of exoplanet research began, and Kepler 452b was one of the most spectacular discoveries of this mission. The goal was to discover all planets outside our solar system, and in particular, those located in the habitable zone of their stars. If this is the case, a planet orbits a star similar to our Sun and is located at a distance that could theoretically allow for liquid water and a climate. Earth-like planets are rocky worlds and have a diameter similar to our world, or a diameter that matches its star and distance from it. With a diameter of about 1.6 Earth radii, Kepler 452b is slightly larger than our home planet, but probably rocky. Its sun is about 1.5 billion years older than ours. That's good. But when it comes to temperature, atmosphere, magnetic field, and exact chemical composition, it gets more difficult. The Kepler mission was groundbreaking, but many questions remained unanswered. Is there really an atmosphere there? What does the surface look like? Is there tectonic activity or even biological traces? It is only since the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope that we have had the latest technologies at our disposal that can better represent parameters such as water vapor, temperatures, and surface conditions. Fictional Landing – Kepler Expedition The journey to Kepler 452b begins with a gentle jolt. After decades of research and preparation, we take off on one of the first interstellar flights. We don't launch from a launch pad, but from a gigantic area of space-time distortion somewhere in the California desert. No sooner has the jolt traveled through the spacecraft than a constant humming begins, and shortly thereafter we reach the orbit of Kepler 452b. The flight through the space-time fold was a stone's throw. Our crew is an international group of scientists, engineers, and biologists. Through the panoramic windows, we look out at a planet shimmering in bluish light. Clouds drift across a surface that appears to be covered by continents and oceans. The atmosphere seems dense but stable. Initial measurements indicate a high proportion of oxygen and nitrogen. We land in a flat valley near the equator. The ground is firm and strewn with dark rock reminiscent of basalt. Plant-like structures cover large areas. They are not trees, but delicate fan-like formations that contract slightly when touched. 
Gravity is noticeably stronger than on Earth, which feels strange but is not particularly hindering when walking. The first steps are like entering a wonderland. Everything is somewhat reminiscent of Earth and yet completely different. The crew moves cautiously through the terrain. Scientists make initial scans of the environment and the astrobiologist who flew with us to Kepler 452b enthusiastically collects samples. The temperature is mild, the air pressure stable. The scans show no immediate danger. It's quiet, no animals, no noises, just the soft hum of the equipment. But beneath the surface, there are signs of microbial life, complex molecules, regular structures, perhaps even primitive cell clusters. A river winds through the valley, fed by a glacier in the distance. The water is clear but rich in minerals. The geologist discovers traces of erosion, tectonic activity, and volcanic deposits. She exchanges ideas with the biologist and both are fascinated by the signs of a living planet. The plants apparently perform a form of photosynthesis, react to light and temperature, and store energy in crystalline structures. In this world, as on our Earth, nature forms a closed ecosystem, only the cycles are slightly different. Everything seems a little lighter, more crystalline, brighter, and imbued with a subdued joie de vivre. The expedition lasts several weeks, and we visit several different types of landscape. The most exciting part is a flight lasting several days just above the surface of Kepler 452b. We rarely disembark, but keep an eye out for any signs of higher or intelligent life. We set up a temporary habitat by a lake, map the surroundings, and send data back to Earth. Even around the camp, this world seems quiet and peaceful. A few snail-like creatures are swimming around in the water, which we stick to the surface of rocks with gel. The biologists collect some of the animals, and they will travel back to Earth with us. At the end of the mission, one thought remains. Kepler 452b shows no signs of higher life forms, but it's a self-contained, perfect, diverse, and friendly world. Can we claim Kepler 452 for ourselves? The journey to Kepler 452b is fictional. When it will be possible is written in the stars. Some researchers believe that we will have our first warp drives in around 20 years. It may take another 100 years before space travel is possible. If we really want to set off for worlds like Kepler 452b one day, we'll need much more than just safe spaceships. We need maps of the universe as it really is. A planet spotted 1,800 light years away from Earth has already traveled 1,800 years in real time. With our telescopes, we only ever see the past. Light that has traveled an incredibly long way through time and space. If we ever manage to visit distant worlds, we will have to consider whether we can simply invade these worlds. Exoplanets such as Kepler 452b must also teach us humility. Space and distant worlds do not belong to us, and our mere presence could cause disturbances. Such journeys would not be without danger for us as humans either. We would probably first send unmanned drones and greeting messages to possible destinations in space before venturing there ourselves. Once we have found Earth too, the question remains whether we want to colonize this world or not. Would we really use a new start on another planet to evolve as a species? Or would we repeat the same mistakes we made on Earth? Humans, an interstellar species? Imagine that one day, humans colonize several Earth-like planets. We may also have made contact with other life forms similar to us. Many philosophers and astro-researchers are certain that humanity will one day venture into space. It's very likely that our space travel will still be linear and in line with the old scientific standards. We need to rethink and turn to new possibilities. It would be pure utopia to think that we could travel through the universe in spaceships for centuries or millennia. It would take us years just to reach the nearest star system and our bodies would probably not be able to withstand this kind of travel through space-time. Some visionaries say that we have simply made errors in our thinking so far. The possibility of warp bubbles in the nanoscale shows that space travel is possible by simply stretching space-time 
and then slipping through folds. Distances in the old standards would then no longer play such a big role, and our bodies would most likely experience very little stress. If we succeed in this, we could travel through space on planes and lines that could potentially be the gateway to many new worlds. No one yet knows how many Earth-like planets there are in the universe. We don't even know how big the universe really is. Statistics assume at least 30 exact Earth twins in the Milky Way, and there could be hundreds or thousands throughout the universe. Added to this are remotely similar planets or rocky worlds that are completely different. If our Earth becomes uninhabitable one day, and it surely will, we will have to move elsewhere. When exactly that will be the case varies between a few thousand years and 100,000 years. Humans have evolved relatively quickly on Earth, making rapid leaps in development, and we continue to change as a species. There is probably no limit, and if we follow the vision of Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev, we will inevitably evolve into space. Perhaps that was even our destiny from the beginning. To this day, we still don't know where we came from. Is it really true that we evolved from apes into modern humans? Many scientists doubt this, and some are even bold enough to say that extraterrestrial influence cannot be ruled out. Hundreds of UFO sightings every year and the zoo hypothesis tell the story of a colorfully populated space and a humanity that is either systematically kept in the dark or preferred to be avoided by other species. If we believe Kardashev's ideas, we need to evolve a little further, become more peaceful, and clean up and improve our technologies. Then other species will also contact us and come within our reach. Click subscribe now. We're constantly publishing new videos.